When I was 11 or 12 years old, the iPodemic began. Everybody ran through school listening to music with those Stone Age Apple headphones or played games on the iPod Touch. Except me. But after weeks or months of difficult negotiations with my parents, they gave me the permission to sacrifice my over year saved money for a device which was more expensive than our car. And only a day or two later, I swaggered out of the tech retailer shop with a brand new iPod Touch 4th gen in my fins. Like it was yesterday, I remember how happy and excited I was, at least till I connected the device to my PC and an update failed. From there on, my new sanctuary just showed an iTunes logo. Unsurprisingly, the 11 or 12 years old me didn't know what a recovery mode was and how to get out of it. And so it began. After using my 45 minutes daily internet time to watch tutorials and read in forums for a week straight, I found the solution. The kit security software my parents installed to keep me away from the evil side of the internet blocked the Apple update service service. So I managed to get my iPod back to work, but that wasn't enough for 11 or 12 years old me. While doing my research to fix the problem I had, I read a lot about CDR and jailbreaking. And so even if I promised my mom I won't, I jailbroke my iPod. And so, the gorgeous times began. While my friends had to spend their whole pocket money for iTunes cards, I received my 8 sides of games from the installer store and paid exactly nothing. But why am I telling you this whole shit? When I charged my old iPods for a video a few days ago, I remembered those times. And when the iPod Touch 4th gen burdensomely booted into iOS 6, I was repeatedly disappointed about what my buddy has become. In this moment, something came to my mind. Back then in my extensive CDR hacker times, I was one of those mistrustful Apple customers. While watching iPhone 3G and iPod 2nd gen users suffering from updates, I created signed restore IPSWs for my iPod to come back to older versions. And I'm pretty sure that one of these old IPSW files has to be in here. Alright, this dusty piece of crap contained two hard drives. Okay, I connected it to my new PC and boom! Look what I found. To cut short, after editing the hosts file, I was actually able to downgrade my iPod to iOS 4.3.3. At this point, shoutouts to 11 or 12 years old me for making this video possible. But then, after doing the setup, the next problem occurred. I had to find a way to get my old music, apps and games back on that device. But because iTunes creates backups automatically, I was optimistic to find one of those on my old hard drive. But I didn't. However, while I copied some private files to my new computer, I accidentally noticed how it copied some IPA files, which means that the old app versions were saved on my hard drive. And with a program called Free U Tools, I succeeded to install them on my iPod Touch. But because Apple don't like people who get their IPA files from different sources than the App Store, the apps won't start. In my opinion, the best solution to get rid of that problem was to jailbreak my iPod. So I did, and now we can take a look at the results. So I installed 20 of my favorite games from back then, because that whole procedure was slow as hell. But anyway, let's take a look at those old dusty IPA files. The game I've already opened is called Hill Climb Racing, a game I think every one of you remembers. I have to admit that I really enjoyed playing this game after such a long time. Then I was dead. Islash is the perfect game for every autistic kid and back then Islash really entertained me and my autistic friends. But nowadays it's very pain in the ass to play it on a display which is smaller than your fingernail. I think this game is still available on the app store so I would recommend it even if you aren't an autistic person. Cut the Rope was a very famous game too. And very surprisingly, your job in this game was to cut the rope. Unfortunately in higher levels you needed a higher IQ and so I uninstalled it. This game definitely was the most played one on my iPod Touch, even if Temperon wasn't a game for me and my friends anymore. It was a lifestyle. And no joke, oft we just met to consume energy drinks and to play Temperon. And here you can see that I'm still the OG Temperon King. Alright, I won't show you all the apps I downloaded in detail, because then the video would durate like 20 minutes. But many of these apps are still available on the App Store, so you can download them and convince yourself. But after taking a glimpse at my games from back then, there's still something missing. My old music. But fortunately, I found the folder I saved all that music in. And consider that I had a very, very, very bad taste of music back then. So I decided that I won't sync it to my iPod. Which brings this video to an end. Even if I couldn't bear the burden of your iOS 6 struggle, I hope I triggered nostalgia and remembered you to the good old days. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and I hope to see you next time again. Adios muchachos!